My father's name was Robert Michael Painter. Uh, he spent most of his life growing up in the, the Salt Lake area, very, very LDS, and went to extremes to, to be the person that everyone wanted him to be. Uh, so uh, him marrying my mother was, um, it was a, a social experiment. They ended up going and staying in their own condo that night. And my father was locked in the bathroom uh, the, the entire evening. The idea that my father was gay was so far out of, out of the, the picture at that point. I mean, it was inconceivable. I never knew my parents were married. They were, they were divorced and separated, you know, before that I ever knew that they were together. But as I got older and started to have these uh, ideas about romance and love and, and, and that sort of thing, I filled in a background for my parents where that they had actually had a very happy marriage. Actually, they didn't become friends until after I was born. So in 1983, I guess early in the year, he had gone in for some some sort of surgery on his nose or something, and uh, he just never got better. It was a different world then, uh, a radically different world in 1983. AIDS had barely, they had barely come up with a name that they could agree on. Because my mother worked in a hospital, we know that there had been people who had passed through, but my father, he was at least the first Utah resident diagnosed. Suddenly they were faced with this, this new thing in that they had been taught their whole lives that gay people were terrible, horrible, awful individuals, and yet they loved Mike. A lot of people were asked to make a sort of decision when he was in the hospital on whether or not they would visit him in the hospital because the pretense was AIDS, but it, the fear really more was of, of you know, his gayness. My mother decided she was all in. She worked at the hospital he was at. She became the ex-wife of the guy who was dying with AIDS. You know, I mean, it, it changed who she was in the work setting radically. My mother chose love and everyone can make that, that decision. You can choose love. You can just love somebody. You don't have to worry about, you know, are they getting to heaven or are they damned or whatever. It, if, if your heart says to love them, why don't you just love them? I always feel like I'm carrying him with me. Um, that we go to places and if I don't have anyone there that I can talk to, I can talk to him. But I'd rather have that in person. where I had always considered my father's death to be a, a blessing for him because he didn't have to go through all, all the horrible things that, that he may have had to have gone through if he had he lived. But then the idea started to get in my head that this world, he could have found a place to be happy in this world. And then as I got older to realize that it wasn't good that he had died, that he would have had a, a better life in this, you know, it would have been a struggle to get to where we are now, but his life would have been so much better and so much uh, fuller. And he could have, he could have been honest, you know. My father's death stopped being a blessing and it, and it really turned into um, what it always was, which was loss.